is here today. Uh, I'd like to talk about our offensive line commitments here. One thing kind of Coach alluded to a little bit about some of these guys. Actually, three of these candidates, or actually commits, I should say, uh, were in our camp this year. Uh, sometimes, obviously, the recruiting thing of offensive linemen, uh, seeing their technique, their abilities, their talents, watching film, some of that stuff you really can't judge unless you get them in a live situation. Alex is a hockey player. Talk about academic-wise, he's a 29 on the ACT. He wants to get into finance. Very smart guy, very cerebral guy, uh, athletic guy, moves around very well, has good knee bend, good hips. You can see him here in some of the pass for how he sinks his hips, uses his hands well. Very physical player. Obviously, he is a hockey player. He's a defenseman and a, as, as a hockey player, so you can see some of the uh, tenacity that he has as he goes through his blocks. And Larry Catholic is more of a, a passing team, so a lot of that really sold me on his ability to, for balance. He's a multi-positional player in that he could play, obviously, a tackle. He could play a, a guard type of spot, possibly a center. Again, I like to cross-train all these young guys to come in and play center. Jake Watucky, a big guy in the class. Jake, 6'5", 280 pounds. Had to fight a lot of guys for this guy. Uh, he was one that was uh, kept battling and kept battling. A lot of some of the bigger schools came in late. and. Uh, he just stayed on it, the whole staff, not just myself, Coach Haycock, Coach Hazel, Coach Rock, a lot of the offensive guys went to see this guy. He just kept on uh, uh, beating them up, and it went very well, and we're very pl pleased to have him here. Uh, Jake's obviously also a, a basketball player, so very athletic guy. Jake's a big guy. Out of all these guys that we've got, Jake probably right now is the most college-ready football player that I'd say we have. To come in here, he's already 280 pounds right now. This guy's going to be a giant. And this guy's probably going to be about 315 once it's all said and done. Yeah. Another one to talk about academic guys. Reno's going to be a pre-med major. Reno's a 30-plus ACT guy, very smart guy. Reno was not in our camp. We found Reno late. I looked at him early on, started to develop, saw his senior tape, fell in love with him. Uh, Marcus actually recruited him, come from uh, Walker's Memorial. Uh, very good kid. Again, great family background here. And last guy is Tad France. Tad, again, another Elyria product. Uh, kind of ironic, Tad and Alex were really close. They played when they were little on, in, in uh, kind of midget league hockey, if you want to call it that. Uh, Tad kind of let the sticks go and skates go, sort of say. Alex still competes in that. But Alex also, or uh, Tad actually also uh, was a multi-sport player. To me, Tad is the most versatile guy out of them all. He can play all five positions. can snap the ball, can play guard, can play as a tackle. Very athletic guy. Um, again, he's another guy, once we get in our weight program here, uh, you know, get him bigger, get him more solid as far as strength-wise goes. But again, very good feet. Again, I want a guy that obviously is a guy that's an athletic guy to come by, uh, more or less a, maybe a defensive lineman that could be an offensive lineman, not really looking for a a real heavy kind of guy, to me, being an athlete, kind of what alluded to what Marcus was saying. We want the guys that can move the feet. Speed, to me, is the most critical thing is being an offensive lineman. That's kind of why we took a lot of these guys, because of their athleticism. We know we can put weight on them. It's easy to put weight on a guy and get him bigger that has athleticism than take a 300-plus pound guy to try to shut him down that can't move. You know, that's not really what we're looking for. So a lot of that go plays into our recruiting and what we're looking for. Uh, we, we set out and then we recruited uh, two tight ends uh, this year. The thing that we were looking for in a tight end position is somebody that has athleticism and that seems to be the theme that keeps echoing, that can run, can catch the football. Both these young men can do that. They have great frames. We're going to have to have a blue collar work ethic in the weight room to develop the size, but uh, I think uh, they'll be able to, to get that done. So we're very excited about these two young men. The first guy is uh, Bryce Backler. Uh, Bryce is from Kenton High School, uh, football rich tradition. They uh, finished second, uh, runner up in the state championship. His uh, brother, Mark, is also a, a defensive end for us. And we were kind of kidding Mark during the course of season, uh, you know, saying that we might uh, bring you over on the tight end side. So I, I think he made certain that his brother came here as the tight end so he could stay on defense. But you can see him catching the football in the state championship game. Uh, he caught five uh, balls, four of them for touchdowns. Next young man, uh, Kyle Crum. Uh, Kyle committed to us uh, during the summertime. I think Louisville was uh, on him pretty heavy at that time. Local guy, or fairly close, Minerva High School. Coach Haycock brought him up. Very athletic kid. Thing that's neat about him, he has a great lower body. 
tremendous balance. You know, if he once he gets in the weight room, uh, he's going to be, uh, I think, something very special. Finished second in the state last year, uh, long jump. You see him going over the middle and making the catch. Spinning off and able to, to get into the end zone. Watch this catch here. Watch the balance. One hand goes up, snags it, keeps his balance. Able to get in the end zone. Great catch there. Here you can see him uh, getting off of a, a, a linebacker or a strong safety and, and running a corner route. Catches it out in his hands. Able, again, to maintain body control and able to get into the end zone. Two excellent prospects. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about the running backs, a little bit uh, in general about the guys we signed. Uh, really, really happy with the type of players, also the type of people that they are. Uh, the one thing that I talk about with both of them when they came on their visits and, and briefly met with them is, is um, you know, the thing, same thing that I preach to the guys that I currently here, have here on the roster is I want guys that are competitors. I want guys that are going to go out there and compete on and off the field. Uh, and it stood out to me talking to both of these individuals. Both really good young men, and, and I'm excited to have them. Uh, Coach Hazel talked about dynamic, bringing in some dynamic playmakers uh, to this class. And I think we've accomplished that in recruiting some of these guys. And, and as you'll see on film, they're very, very uh, dynamic and explosive players. Uh, the first guy is CJ uh, Brathwaite. Um, CJ's from West Bloomfield High School, uh, right, right there near Detroit, Michigan. Um, if, if, if you look at CJ uh, in person, you really get, you really appreciate how special he is on the field. The one thing that stands out to me is he is very dynamic, has great vision, uh, really is is one of those players, in my opinion, that that has the ability to to really hurt you. He makes a lot of guys miss, and he's a guy that's going to take the ball all the way for a touchdown uh, if given the opportunity. Uh, but he's a guy that can create plays on his own. I always talk to running backs. I can give you a lot of things, but I think we all know that there's one position on the field that you know sometimes those guys either have it or they don't have it and that's the running back position. Uh, you can either create plays for yourself or you can't. Uh, and both of the guys that we've brought in can have the ability to do that. Uh, also, CJ uh, has the ability to do some things in the slot uh, for us as a receiver if we'd like to do that. I know that would make Coach Rock happy because he really likes to utilize some of these guys. So recruiting players that we can also implement uh, in other parts of our offense is, is really uh, key for us. So I'm excited about getting uh, CJ. Um, and then you go to Julian Durden. Julian, um, is out of Montour High School, right, in, right outside of Pittsburgh. Julian's a little bit smaller, uh, but again, very explosive, uh, real, really good lateral movement. Uh, he's a guy that has rushed for 2,000 yards uh, for the last two years um, and, and is really, really explosive. Uh, selected to play in a big 33 All-Star game. Uh, and, and really, when you sit down and you talk with him, you, you really get a feel that this guy's going to be special. Uh, he does some things on the field that, that are really, really impressive. Uh, you can see some of his lateral movement there. Just great vision, and it is really a home run hit type guy. Uh, a little bit smaller in statue as a compared to CJ, but uh, Doug Davis, our head strength football coach, does a great job, and I'm sure he'll get those guys uh, a little bit of weight on him. Uh, but there again, again, he's an unbelievable dynamic player, and we're really excited to get him. So extremely happy with those guys, and, and I know we're going to have uh, two more guys that we can add to our stable running backs and, and, and really look forward to coaching those guys in the future. I'm really excited about the group of young men that we signed today. Uh, we have three receivers. Uh, the one thing we wanted to do was get, get, get a little bigger at the receiver position and a little bit more athletic. Uh, so what you're going to see with these videos is the first guy, Charles Chandler, is from uh, DeSales in Columbus, 6'3", 6'3", about 185. He also plays basketball, has great hands. Watch this catch. He's going to go with one hand. You can see, leave his feet, one hand catch. We got to have guys that can do that consistently. The great thing about these three guys is they're, they were, they're, they're top guys on their football team. So when you put them at receiver, they're used to getting the ball. They're used to, they want to have the ball. And that's what you want. You want guys that want the ball every play. Right? Next guy is uh, James Brooks. James is from South Lake High School in Mineola, Florida. This kid is something special. He played, in one game, he played eight different positions in one time, in one game. Eight different positions. That's unbelievable. This kid is a great kid. 
uh, got to know him, and, and I, just, I just fell in love with this kid. He's something special. When the ball's in his hand, he can make plays. He can make you miss. Uh, I'm, he's, be, be honest, this is the kind of kid I called on a Friday night at 8.30. He was lifting weights. On Friday night at 8.30 for a high school guy, that's something special. So James, I'm really looking forward to James getting here. The, the other guy is Wim Woods, another athletic kid, a little smaller, 5'9", five, 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 175, right here from Shaw High School. Uh, this year he played quarterback, but junior year he played a little receiver. And what, you, what you're finding out here in, in high school, uh, most teams that run the spread is taking their best athlete and putting him at quarterback. So you're not seeing a whole lot of wide receivers, cornerbacks, the guys that we project to the next level to play that position because they are playing that quarterback position. So uh, here we go. We watch Wim. He's the quarterback here. All right. Good ball skills. He's got a little burst. Got a knack for the end zone. Wim and James both can help us in the, help us in the return game, which is another plus for us. When you get a receiver, they can also play special teams. It adds depth to your football program. When you go around uh, uh, or, or start uh, or the recruiting process and recruiting quarterbacks, it's a little bit, uh, little bit different, I think, because in all reality, uh, you're trying to really go out and hire a coach because the quarterback position is such, at least in our program and in our offense, where uh, there's a lot of times you almost have to turn your team over to that guy. And so that was one of the things that we wanted to keep in the forefront of our minds when we set out to go out uh, in the recruiting process. And we're really excited. I know I'm personally incredibly excited about the two guys that we have coming in um, in this class uh, uh, for different reasons, um, but for a lot of the same reasons as well. Um, they both have different stories, um, but uh, I think they can come in and have an immediate impact in, 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 in some respects uh, to our program. And uh, for that reason, we're really excited. The first guy is uh, 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 Colin Reardon. And Colin's from just down the road here at, at, in uh, Poland uh, High School in Poland, Ohio. And uh, Colin's a guy that we kind of earmarked really early in the recruiting process, a guy that uh, uh, we saw in, uh, watched some junior tape of him and really liked him a whole bunch, saw him at a couple camps. Um, he came and visited us, and we were able to, to, to develop those relationships that I think are so very important when it comes in recruiting a quarterback. But uh, the, big, the plays that you see on here, they're all big plays, and uh, we all look for big play capability. But one of the things that you notice about Colin is that he has, he's got good, very good arm strength, very good arm strength. But uh, uh, he's able to, to have, well, he has great pocket presence. He can maneuver within the pocket. He's also got the athletic ability to avoid the rush, and when he needs to, he can pull it down and run with the ball. He's very accurate with the football um, and a uh, uh, very level-headed guy who, is, who I immediately uh, took to and said, this is the kind of guy that can really lead our program, really lead our program. And, and we're really, really, really excited about, about him. Uh, the second guy is David Fisher, and his story is a little bit different. Uh, Coach Hazel and I decided, um, uh, I guess it was, at some point in time over the course of the season that we were going to we were interested in going out and looking for a junior college quarterback and over the course of a couple of weeks we probably watched a lot a lot or 50 to 60 quarterbacks um, in the junior college ranks and uh, and like Colin uh, who we was earmarked as our first choice David was the guy that we earmarked and after I went out to visit to San Diego to visit him for the very first time I understood one of the reasons why um, that we had uh, really kind of fallen in love with him or became an enchanted with him. Um, he's not only a great athlete and a great quarterback and a, and, a, and a really wonderful person, but he's got charisma. And he's on campus right now, so some of you may have had the opportunity to meet him already, and he'll be able to participate in spring practice. But uh, he's got that, that, that playmaking ability of keeping plays alive and, and uh, uh, makes things happen on the field and uh, as you can see here he's kind of throwing a couple off balance but he also has very good arm strength a very accurate passer um, and uh, we're looking for huge huge things out of him the the thing that excites me about these two guys is that it, it creates immediate competition at the quarterback position and if you're ever going to be successful uh, in, in an offense in, in an offense like ours where the, where it's quarterback driven um, you need to have great competition, and they need to be able to take an ownership in the football team. And we've got, we've got a couple of guys that will create that for us, and we'll take a lot of pride and take an ownership of this football team.